Hi, Jason Breach. So, what we're going to do today, we're going to continue our little jewellery box thing. So, the small box we have here, one we did for a little project in here as a write-up. So, could we do it as a video? So, last episode we did the frame. It takes a little bit of time. I quite, you know, people say, how long does it take you to make something? Oh, that takes an hour to run through. So, we did our routed halving joint, if you like. So that comes together to make a corner joint. Quite nice to look at. Let's have a quick look on there, look, Ben. So, got our joint. Then that there. Why well, undo this? You can see how this comes apart. You get your slot, your tenon. We put the two together. That looks good. All right. So we did our carcass. We made up the four. All right. So we got the end grade on here coming through. On the first box I did, I did it alternate corners, so you can have whatever you like. You can see how this fits together quite nice, holds. So it's got enough tightness to it. Can't have those joints too tight, you'll crack the fibre. It's got a little bit to clean off the inside, so it'll relieve those joints a bit as well. So, got our frame. What we've got to do today is do the groove, put the panels in. Sounds so simple. We're going to do most of this, a little bit of a mixture again, so a little bit of routing some hand work. There's other ways you could speed this up. All right, so we got our box. So first thing, like I said, we're gonna do the groove. First thing I need to do then, just take this apart. And I'm actually gonna lay it down in the sequence. I don't know if you can see that. Let's have that there. I can move it back out of the way. So we have our sequence of what we have there. Two sides, two ends. And I'm just gonna slide it over because that's actually the way up we need to look at it to do what we're gonna do now. We want to do the groove. So we go back to our routing jig that we have. Now we use this to do the halving joint. So just going to put it back in the vise, position things a bit. So when we did the halving joint, I used this area. And like I said, with this as a box, you could make one, you could make a batch of 20. Doesn't matter. We pointed out the material for the OSB that I've used here is the same thickness as my material I've machined the timber. So we want to do the groove, so we're going to use this area. So first thing I'm just going to do, I want to remove these. These need just to come out the way. We're going to put them back on. One in there. And there. So our board material, we want to do a groove on the inside face, so I can lay this in internally. Again, keep the dust to a minimal. I can come right down to the point here. I can actually secure something. I think we go that one for a minute as a block to hold it in place. All right. So that's quite easy to do. We can lock it down. Going to use small router again. I'm just going to grab another small screw just out the cupboard while we're here. I think we might be taking this bit out then. Two of those. One there. I wonder if I can use that as a stop. We get on the edge. Yeah, okay. All right. So, I'm going to use the router. So, exactly the same setup we had it before. So, I haven't adjusted anything. I've left it in exactly the same place. So, therefore, we've got our plunge depth exactly the same, which is that five mil halfway setting. So, left from when we used it before. What we want to check now is where we start and stop. What we don't want to do is come all the way out through the groove area on the ends. So we want to start where the recess is and finish the other end without going all the way out through. So the easiest way to do that, first thing we're going to do, make sure the router's unplugged. I can also just take the extraction nozzle just off the top. Just makes it a bit more movable for a minute. I can lay it on there. Then the cutter up, that's better. So with the jig I've made here, the stop button down the side here is screwed on. 
you can see the rip piece drops in stop point on the end holds that in place stops the ball moving forward or back the position of this means that my cutter is 10 mil to the outside edge which you'll see for where the groove is so we can do our groove so i've screwed this on in relation to where i want that to be my panel thickness is 10 mil for the top the base is 6 mil so it's actually recessed and set up inside a little bit so we get a little bit of a step here so it sits on the four corners is better all right okay so on there i know my cut's going to be there now if i bring the cutter over in line with the groove that we've got down this end i can see where we start it is there i can draw a line around the edge of the router pencil line around here got to do the same down this end down to there i can put a line on there all right that's so much easier to do there. so having done that we want that bit that bit glasses so we can see which line now i've got to go a bit careful because i can see that i've got line already on there when i check which one it is it's that one so my stop block on here i can fix in place so the curve of my line and there the stop block comes up to it the other end hoping i can put a g-clamp in there that'll work that'll be enough i think so right on the edge of where the board is so i'm just sort of hoping we can get a clamp on there as long as I'm on that line, it's not going to affect it. We're not going to push against this too much. And position it. Okay. So we've got start point, stop point set up. Quite easy to do. So we're building things around the jig, if you like. Instead of having to try and guess and look at where the cutter is going to start, we've now got the accuracy of a start and a stop point. Put the extraction nozzle back in. Position the router. Just going to put the hose, like I did yesterday, into the vise down the far end, just to support it, stop it dragging about. Now, before you go to do anything, do that dry run. So, on here, I'm going to check that it will move from one end to the other, unhindered. Nothing pushing it out, nothing catching it. So, something like a screw head or anything like that can affect it. So, we're just checking this will run back and forward, nice and easy. Done. That's good and easy. Realtor, we can plug in, put the extraction on. I need to find my goggles and my earmuffs. Now we've already set the depth. We know it's five mil. So go to there. Now we're going to break this down in stages again. So router goes on. My left hand is actually on the plunge block. Right hand, I'm pushing against the bike. So I can bring it down into there. up to that stop point bring it back up so I can come back to the start I've got a lot of fluffy fibres in there I'm just going to do secondary pass with this I can turn the board round back to the sign check it down in properly make sure there's no dust the chum down Slide along, not moving too fast because it's trying to cut. All the way along. One board done. Got to do the same. So we do the other long one. Position. Check it's in right. Getting a little bit of wobble there, I don't know why, so I would check and tighten things up. A bit high this corner it seems, so we'll double check. The chum. Bring down. So again, my right thumb is pushing back against that backstop. 
left hand control in the router. Exactly the same all the way through. So we have two long ones done. Got the short ones to do now. So we can load those. Now these have got to go from start all the way through. There isn't so much as a stop point on this one. I can move that stop block in. Just going to bring it down, that's better, fix it in place. This isn't so critical, the clamp on the corner. But I can use the clamp as a guide of where I want to be. I think it's going to be right off the edge actually, so... Okay, I've got a stop point right on the edge there, so I could possibly play with the bench. So I've just clamped the bit of oak upright. I can hear to stop anything moving. Do I start off the board? That's fine. This one I've got to come all the way through because how are these loads? Not going to affect it. You're not going to see it. I've got to do obviously the four sides. So on, I come down. Also start Hoover kicks in, gets rid of the dust. Bump. Set up on there. Third one. Three through. So I can do fourth one on here, so I jump the clumps down in. Come through. All the way through to there. Switch it off. Okay, we can put the router right back out the way now. I don't need the hose in there. Ben's just picking up whatever I've thrown on the floor of the box. Okay, Ben. That'd be good. Uh-oh. Yeah, put him over there for a minute. Okay. Move a few things about. Cut the goggles off there. Do we have our sides? Four bits. Just one ruler got a little bit of fluff in this one so i'm just going to clean this out <sighs> good All four. <sighs> we numbered our joints when we started so let's find things again number one is there two will be there three four three's down there so that's two <sighs> careful flip them over bit break through there Got to go in, back to there. So now we have our groove running 
all the way around. I don't know if you can really see from there, you go down through here. Looks good. Nice and parallel. Just the fact of how we've set that routing jig up, nice and equal. If you have things like a router table, yeah, sure you can do it on a router table. Try and take this right back to basics. If maybe you've got a quarter inch router, I can do that. Now, we need to get the measurement now of the size of what the panel needs to be. So, in here, we have a 5mm recess, right, with where the ruler, I'll come in a bit, is going into that groove. So, I've got 5mm there, if I take my measurement to here, or we can do this, at the moment I've got 190mm and I'm sat on the edge. We have 5mm either end, that's 200 All right, that'll do, something to write on, 200 the width here is actually the same with how I've done this box. Do you the groove is level here with what we've done as the other recess? It's the width of that. So, 145. So we need, what do we need now? A shooting board. Then you could go use your table saw if you have such an elaborate thing. But back to our plane. I've roughly cut the panels to size. I know these are over. Not by a lot. Um, so we have 206 mil by 152. So we've got about a quarter of an inch over, six mil over in any angle, all right, or any way round. So we need to get these cleaned up. I need flat faces. This hasn't got a nice flat edge. It's actually board edge, if you like. So I'm going to clean that one up to start with. So back to the plane. Now I can use my shooting board even for this. This is going down the ground. This is about cleaning up, giving us a nice clean edge, that's good. We'll do edge there. Now I said to you, let's do our width first. So at the moment we've now got a nice clean edge. I could shoot an end, but it's actually we want that width. So I can use marking gauge. Easiest way I can probably set this up for this is actually that. I could even, if you really want to do like we did a bit yesterday, stand it up. All right, I think camera two will pick that up look nicely. I've stood that right up on there. So I can use the prong down to the table or down to the level board. I'm resting off the back of the top. That gives me the width for the panel I want. The cutting wheel on here is dead flush with the top, so that should be correct. Tricky to do this one now because it's quite wide. So I need to, a little bit of focus, work in short stages. Not trying to do it all in one long pull. So I've scribed down through. All right, and I'm sorry if my hands block, I've got to position things a little bit. I just prefer to pull gauge towards me. So we've got a scribe line now that gives us a nice accurate point to work to down here. And that edge, where my thumb is, it'll lock in nice, you've got one the other side. Face edge we've already done. Now I'm just going to square up this end at the, here, because I can use that to my advantage as well. That gives me a square edge there, but now I can start to come down here. We've got a little bit to come off. Again, that grip on the plane is so important. How I can hold this, I don't want to tilt it, I don't want to rock it in. Keeping the side of the plane that's on the board level. Slowing things down, getting nearer. Let's have a look. Bit to go there. Just 
we are hold it under the light, see what's happening. A tiny bit. Down for there. So hopefully I can double check. Now this is quite a small panel. I'm not going to need much room for movement, expansion, contraction. Checking where things are lying up. That's quite good. So now we want to do our length. Now we've got to do the same with the cedar panel in a second. Our length we said 200. Now I know my gauge won't go to 200. So I'm having to go back to pencil for a second. And again we're doing that thing with the ruler where I can use the ruler, I can cite the measurement on here, bring it back. Set it up square, so I'm looking at parallel edge, check my measurement, draw a line on the end, so you don't get six little lines. Nice clear line on there. Got a parallel face to what we did here now. So up the light, Let's have a look, see my pencil line just on the other end. Okay. Let's have a quick look now properly. So we need to get square so I can use the light in here to help me. Bit in the back corner. That's not bad. Just having a feel my fingertips, slight hollow in the middle. Turn it round, check there. We can get things nice and square. Double check the measurements. Anything? And a tiny bit off there. Now again, we're shooting across hand grain, so we've done one. Need to do the cedar with one as well. We have straight edge down for there. Gonna line it up. Which way does it line up better there? Straight edge. Gauge we know is still set. Roll it down through. One side, we'll do the other just to give us something that's correct. Gently pull it along. Well, on the grain a little bit there, we'll be okay. So we've got our scribe line, got an edge. Let's do an end as well. So off that initial edge that we've straightened in, we can do an end. Then we can turn it round, that gives me something to sit on here. Now for my board, I can see it tapers here towards the line, it's thicker more material off the fence side. So we can start to get that port in here and run the plane down that board underneath that straight edge. What I'm not trying to do is start tilting this out because I'm pushing this too far out. So keeping minimal amount of projection off that shooting board. My right hand is gripping and pushing actually diagonally. what's going on that's good should be straight down for there we can come off to there I've got my scribe line that's just flaked away where we get to that marking gauge line that's good we then need our 200 just on here again I can use the stop 
So I'm a 200. I'm going to line it up a bit square. I could use the fence on the shooting board there. Pencil lines can be a bit thick, so this is a guideline if you like. And then we can double check it. Why not do the two together? It's quite a lot of material. We managed this to her now. This is a lot wider. Not so much to come off this. Uh, this is softwood Cedar 11, actually aromatic, so it smells nice. I think so. Another nice thing we're using shooting board, get a nice clean end on here. I won't pick it up in the camera, it's a bit thin, but you don't get a torn grain, so nice and smooth. Look at what we're getting as a shaving coming off. Beautiful to get, just... So, I think we're going to check it against the Elm one. Alright, pretty good. Alright, so we've got our panels. Nicely the same. Oh, right, okay. Quick move about the things. Done with the big plane for a second again. Shooting board, go back out the way. We've got to get these to fit. Into here. All right, our oh, four bits. Going to start with the cedar wood one first. Nearly goes tiny little bit actually. It's not a lot. I can check my length. Well, good. That's tiny amount just to go in here. Won't quite fit accurately. So we've got a little bit to come off there. How much? Let's have a look. Well, I think we're going to have to do what I've set up to do. Another little jig board. Let's bring that into there, is that going to be enough? Probably. So with this board, what does this do? We're going to use rebate plane. Right. Or shoulder plane. Going to use it, so the board I've set up here allows me to get the panels in underneath. I've got an overhang of five mil. And we could just drop this back out. So we have two screwed down buttons front and back. Bit of oak, 10 mil thick, the same as we did before. So they came off the original box as a thickness. A straight edge to run the plane along. So this is almost like making another shooting board. I have a depth stop. Put in the front, five mil out from the edge of here. All right, so that goes in. We can go to there. Our panel material, therefore, can go in under. And this is thinner stuff. This is the cedar with the plane. If I can find a cut, got to bring it forward a little bit. So I can use the side of the plane to run on here. Now, I don't know. Let's just see if Bane will go to camera two for me. Let's just see if we get a better shot if I move. That's better if I come to that side, isn't it? Just trying to show you a bit more as we go along. All right, so the idea with this is the board I can push forward with my hand and hold in place. I can come along, take a bit of material off. So not a lot to come off these. I need to monitor how it fits into our groove. Bit more of this end, far end, which would be about right, wouldn't it? Now I've got to take a bit more up there. How about that? Okay, one done. <sighs> got to work across the ground. In, check that's good not a lot on this the elm one's going to take a bit more time why well, i thought we'd do this one first again checking how things are running down that'll fit in 
Again, don't want it too tight. So this is pinching a little bit in the middle. So you can see the idea of this straight edge now about keeping things nice and straight, giving you, if you like, a depth stop set up. That's good. Last side on this. Now you could make up in reality another routing jig. So you could do this with a router. Just see what's going on. Right, okay, got cedar wood done. Now the hard work then. Done the easy one. A little bit of elm fits in under. Firmly. Squeeze it in. Oh, blow the dust out. Don't want that particle in there. We're up to. No working cross grain to start with. So, board direction running here. Outside face is facing up, what I want to see on the out of the box. So, on here, we can work across. That's a bit of material take off on these. Takes a little bit more time. Checking what we're cutting. I do have a guide when I get down to this button, so I've still a bit to go. Both hands coming into operation on this because it's a bit thicker to do. I'm trying to keep the front square on that board. <sighs> so we're getting there. Bring the plate up just a little bit on the cut. I think I haven't swung it over a bit. Weird. Okay, bring back. Just have a reset with my block a minute then. Now, just checking how much cut I've got and where. Try and take too heavy a cut, you don't get anywhere. Just trying to find enough. Nothing like trying to get your feet in the way, is there? Okay, I'm going to come towards here a minute then. Lots to cut that side. Uh, taking the bulk out, so that would suggest I need to bring the blade over a little bit. That's better. Again, having a feel what's going on. This is going to take a little bit of time. That's better. Okay, up from there. Doing a little bit of a lump on the front where I'm trying to start, so working both ways and cross grain first so if we break any fibres out we can clean them up a little bit to go I can use my fingertip I'm feeling what's happening up on here alright good I hope Right, I'm going to just slacken off just in there a little bit. Not allow it to come out. Need to check it will fit into our groove. All right, so it fits in there quite nice, flush on the inside. Again, nice fit. Done one end grain one, we'll do the other. Again, slide it back in. I just need to tighten these back down. I did these just to make it easier to get it in and out. Checking how things are coming on. I'll just reverse it, come back from the other side because we'll be able to lump in the middle if I'm not careful. If 
fingertips is feeling if we're anywhere near the bit of cedar. Bit to go yet. Again, having a feel. Bit on the back there. Nearly there, that's flush front wise. Bit on the back edge, bit in the middle. Ah, gently work free. See if we can pull it out and do. No, okay, we're slacking them off. Just take a little bit of pressure off. Have a check. Exactly the same as we did before. Will it fit in? That's not too bad. A little bit over on that, but that that's good. I want it to fit. I don't want it to be mega tight. Nice straight shoulder line. Down on there. Comes together beautifully. Now, if I said you want to use a rebate plane to cut a panel to fit, you'd all laugh. Why can't you? So, just so I can get it in up to our depth. A little bit to go, a bit out of skew, that's better. Need to get it parallel. So now we're going to come down the grain. Again, having a feel what's going on. I need to turn it over and go come back. Again, trying to be nice and firm with my fingers to keep the plane up against that side stop. going on we can feel what's happening here with pencil tip small lip on either turn it round again again pencil tip what's happening here tiny little lip a little bit that end. So I'm blending into what we have. Finger in the middle, got a bit of a lump. Now, there's a feeling I reckon this will need a little bit more off. But, we need to have a go, have a play. I'm going to struggle to push it out from where I am, but I can actually use, hopefully, my ruler on that step. Now, I reckon we need a little bit more off. But the only way to find out, have a try. Just a little bit thick. Close. Just that little bit over. So I slide it back in, all the way up to the stop. Just pin those screws back down again. I'm not undoing them any large amount, just taking the tension off the heads almost. Back the other way. Again, I'm gonna feel, see what's going on. things equal pressure all the way down through get more resistance in the middle it's quite amazing because it was push the blade up just a little bit push the plane up we want to create a flat 
and it's the fact I tend to work them both ways makes it easier let's have a quick look again check how this is gonna go that's good just fit and again I don't want it a tight fit we can put a little bit of glue it's not gonna rattle about I don't want to break anything off pushing it in so that one's done clean out Got a shaving in there bring it up out to our edge sit square on the end down here and push it down a bit maybe so all of this has been made so it's nice and square so it holds it squarely last one turn around getting a build up in the corner so I'm going to come back the other way the blade might be protruding out a little bit more on the other side just to get that very corner point Again, having a feel, still got a lip here, one on the back. Work free. Fingertips. What's going on? Tiny bit. So again, I can go with pencil if I need. There's a little step there. Slightly bigger on the far end, so I'm going to start midway. Nice and firm again with the fingertips. And hopefully... We can push this out. Hoping. Might need a tiny bit. Ooh. Do I can bend a little bit tight? Oh, back in. Ah. Make sure it's up against the side stop. There was me hoping that was the end of that. Okay. A little bit to go. And it is tiny. One. Set up nicely. Fingers work again, keep everything square. A nice square shoulder line. And to think this is what they used to do when they used to make old furniture. I think this can go. Let's put it out of the way. Alright, let's have a quick look then, see where we are. Two. That's two on there. Bottom will be that way. I want to check things come together. Other thing I can do with this one, thinking about it, which will be good. But okay. Have the abrasive paper. One eight. That will do. Just to help this glide in. So I've propped it up just a little bit. I'm just going to take the corner edge off. This is just some 180 grip. We've got to sand all the panels yet. But just to take that corner off will help it glide into that groove. Push it down. I can see where I'm not. Got a little bit of twist on my panel. Good. Lid one. Got shaving on there. Could do the same. Light bit. Just a chamfer. That leading edge. And this is only some 180 grit. We're not going to anything too aggressive. Particle there. We'll get rid of it. 
don't need too anything too aggressive this is just about softening that edge help it glide into the groove push it down got to come in that way a bit all right tiny bit that's good we should have three is that one there hoping with this you see it is a bit tighter than the arm push them on sounded good pulled it back look at this dry rum it fits together quite tight a tiny bit there i hope we can get that one has got to be up on there because that's got the line that's to there Something just to the clamp. I've got that last little bit to go to cover this corner. Squeezing things up. That's easier, more controllable to do than you're getting your hammer or your mallet out. So again, squeeze it up. Check where things are. I can even do, and this is going to look a bit weird, if there's anything on that panel that's out, that I pull in this corner popped out again look let's get that one back in I turn the clamp over so it's a bit more controllable I'm in line with the joint a bit more bottom corner what have we got there hmm. oh. now I think it will go it's gone on the top Maybe just a little bit tight on that cedar on the bottom there. Okay, let's have a quick look then. It's a tiny little bit tight, nothing drastic. All right, so, we have our box, got our inlay, okay. We know it will go together. It's going to be fun to get it apart now. Nice and patient. Good. Trying to pull the panels up to disengage them from the bottom or that base side, and we'll take that out. So we've got our components. At this stage, we'll see how we go. We're going to just do one. Going to hand sand. All right. All I'm going to do for a minute, I think, is the ash ones. I wonder if I can use a bit high. The music board, you don't need to sand this too dramatically. So again, we're going just 180 grit. All I want to do is lose anything in there, including that pencil line. Go with the grain. I can turn it round. Clean out, let's do short one. On here, I can again use my pressure just to sand that in. Why not orbital sand it? It will soften all the joints too much. It will roll all the edges. You won't get crisp corners. So where the panel comes in and hits the side nicely, it's gonna lose all that crispness. Yeah, turn them round. You'd obviously do all of it. You need to do your panels insides. Don't need to worry about the outside yet. We can get to that later. The, the bottom, we need to sand both sides because obviously that's recessed in. So you need to sand top and bottom of that. This stage, once you've sanded it all, you can actually glue it all together. The only place you really need glue, I haven't thought about gluing it up on the camera, but it, it's like, it takes time. Brush your glue on here down that tannin face, a little bit on the end. 
tiny little bit on the inside but if you get too much on there it's going to bust through onto the inside of what you've sanded and it will show so really a case of there there locate it put your panels in you can put a spot of glue if they rattle about but you shouldn't need too much glue on there you want those as a loose panel to allow them just to move that little bit all right glue it up clamp it together carefully all right let it dry so all right okay end of today Hopefully that's given you the next little stage. Yes, you could use router to do what we've done with that. Quite interesting to use shoulder plane like we've done. Cut that nice groove. Get that nice and flat. Get that crispness. Difficult to set up with you know, maybe a router table. A bit more controllable with this. It's a joy thing of getting shavings, isn't it? So we will see. We've got one stage. Hopefully you go to this. So when do you join us next time? I will have glued it together. We're going to go over then the parting, the cleaning up, the lining the inside, fitting the lid. Right. So I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for joining us. See you again soon. Bye then.